how did you guys meet? Mm-hmm. We're actually high school sweethearts. <gasps> and then mm-hmm. when he left early to go to the University of Tennessee, that's when we broke up. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when we were both in college, we weren't together. My mom was still watching him play. I'm like, why are you watching this? This is the enemy. <laughs> no, we did not watch the enemy play anymore. <laughs> and then he came back down after New England Patriots and I got like a DM. I'm like, what, what this man DM me for? But <laughs> I went and I was like, wow, we actually had a good time. So we just kept seeing each other mm-hmm. more and more. And I'm like, okay, look, I've been your girlfriend, got the t-shirt. So unless it's going to move to marriage. Pull up in the slab and pull off with you in my lap. Top down. Hey, welcome to Travel Tuesday Happy Hour where we interview dope people doing dope things from around the world. And this week, once again, we have my amazing queen as a co-host. Can you tell them who you are? Hey, honey, I'm your fiance. I'm Jackie. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And we are joined by some amazing travelers. Can you guys tell us who you are? I'm Chelsea. And I'm Court. <laughs> and where are you guys from? We're both from Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. Born and raised. Oh, mm-hmm. Orlando, Florida. Wow. Uh, Disney, Universal. Uh, what else is out that way? Heat. A lot of heat. Honestly, anything you can think of. We actually have Disney annual passes. Yeah, we do. We oh, have. wow. Oh, nice. Nice. We might have to look, Jackie, we might have to borrow the passes. I mean, them. can we go? Can yeah. we all go together? <laughs> yes. this, Wait, this so this is, this is news. People that live in Orlando actually go to Disney and Universal, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> people think Disney's just for kids, but at Epcot, they, you can drink around the world, and oh. that's how you can get lit and have so much fun at Disney. Very true. You, you can drink around the world. We can drink around that's, the world. That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah, you, you like, really like I was in Thailand <laughs> just two minutes ago. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. So tell us what you guys do. Um, I'm an attorney, but I'm kind of like transitioning to more of like content creation because Mm -hmm. being an attorney is great, but you don't have the freedom, especially being black and having locks. It's just, it's still an old white man's world and Mm -hmm. less than 5% of attorneys are black. So it's just a real big dynamic. And I, I don't kiss nobody's ass. And that's the struggle that I've been in with firm life. So I'm like, okay. Let me just go out. And then we also have our fitness company. So I'm basically the attorney for that. Mm -hmm. Um, That's what I do. Man, look at her being modest. Man, she is an amazing (laughs) chef. Okay. She didn't mention it. I'm going to mention it because she, I don't know why she's so down. She is an amazing chef. Uh, You guys ever get the chance? Her Korean fried chicken? Good Lord. They know what they're doing to that bird. Let me tell you something. (laughs) I'm I'm Look, I'm telling you, it is amazing. Now, for me, I do a bunch of things. I'm a retired professional football player. I was with the New England Patriots back in 2017. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm a software developer. Um, I help basically guide well with their apps, websites, and some of their APIs. Um, it's really just a bunch of code. In addition to that, I also make music. I have a music page. And I'm also recently a certified personal trainer. So I also help people realize their fitness goals. We mm-hmm. have a business that she mentioned called Mean Marine Training. Um, we just got that up and running. We have a website, Instagram page. Uh, we'll talk about that more later, but it's going very well. And uh, we're excited about helping people realize and to feel and look better. Get that so, IG body. That, yes. 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 <laughs> For all ages, you know, from five years to 62. I, I help everybody. Athletes as well. I also train defensive end and linebackers. Um, we do an amazing job. So. Oh, that's so I dope. Got a fellow IT geek on here. You know, mm-hmm. you listen, go. that's the other thing, man. IT don't have a particular way. You ain't got to have pocket protector and glasses and look like a nerd or whatever <laughs> you're supposed to look like to y'all. I'm just saying, it ain't the revenge of the nerds anymore. Look, we got no, four no, 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 with not. locks. You know what I mean? We break that barrier. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. I'll tell you what, about. speaking of that barrier, I remember my parents always told me, like, you're never going to get a job with those with those dreads. You're never going to get a job. My Both mm-hmm. my parents were police officers. They never let me get locks. Not one yeah. time when I pleaded, got straight A's, never got it. 
And I think it's just the proof in the pudding that I have a good job, well-paying engineering job, and I have locks. So um, I'm just proof that things are changing and we're proof that things are changing. So did you have locks when you were in the NFL? So I cut them off, obviously, when I played. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story about that, too. I mean, you were playing for the Patriots. There is no more All-American. I asked him, I said, hey, guys, am I going to, can I keep my locks? He's like, yeah, 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 you can keep your locks. Lied to me, man. They said, yeah, you know what the drill is. I had to cut them off. But I actually, when I was at New England, I was like, you know, this clean cut stuff isn't doing it for me. I had to lock back up. So I had little wicks, you know, I probably look like Kodak or whatever, but I had them. So. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. So that's amazing. That's amazing. So how did you guys meet? Mm-hmm. We're actually high school sweethearts. <gasps> and then mm-hmm. when he left early to go to the University of Tennessee, that's when we broke up. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when we were both in college, we weren't together. My mom was still watching him play. I'm like, why are you watching this? This is the enemy. <laughs> no, we did not watch the enemy play anymore. <laughs> and then he came back down after New England Patriots. And I got like a DM. I'm like, what, what this man DM me for? But <laughs> I went and I was like, wow, we actually had a good time. So we just kept seeing each other mm-hmm. more and more. And I'm like, okay, look, I've been your girlfriend, got the t-shirt. So unless it's going to move to marriage. She's like, where's the ring? I don't see any ring. In this <laughs> we ain't going to do it. And then that's when he stepped up and he proposed at Disney. And it was very frustrating. Oh, at Disney. She was like, she was like you know, I- I'll tell you a funny story. She was like, I'm not going to be your girlfriend. He's like, if we're getting married or not, whole time I just got the ring. I'm like, yo, give me a couple weekends. <laughs> you have, I was like, Jesus. but I couldn't tell her that we're in there. So I played it off. I was like, that was when we were gonna move. No, he was trying yeah. to take me to Tennessee. Uh-huh. And I was just like, um, I'm not trying to move out the state mm-hmm. until I have something. And he kind of brushed it off. I said, Okay, when I graduate. <laughs> TikTok. I don't know what I said. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know. We on God's time. I don't yeah, know what I said. I said something completely. Like, but the yeah. whole time I had the ring, and I was just like, bro, I cannot hide nothing from this girl. She is on my tail. <laughs> so yeah, funny. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, that's and such a dope story. Yeah, High school sweethearts yeah. and then rekindled and then got married. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, look, that, that shows that black love is stronger than anything else, right? Stronger than distance, stronger at careers. Mom, Dukes was holding you down. She must be your best friend at this point man yeah they're, they're very similar because i told him in high school we was gonna get married man that scared and, me and he didn't want to believe me i'm like look if you listen to your wife you always gonna be right me. <laughs> was right though hey look, look, yeah, we're not gonna be that's right. that's that messaging great. out there okay we're not gonna put say, that say it again chelsea there. say it look, again look, say it again listen happy your spouse wife right <laughs> Happy spouse, happy house. So we it's a, it's a two-way communication, all right? Two-way Oh, man, I'm taking that one. I'm taking that one. Happy you know day. what I mean? I can't take credit for it. It was on one of our uh, live episodes. So, you know, but definitely. You can take credit Happy house, now. happy spouse. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what was y'all's first trip like? What was Where was your first trip? It was Cancun because he's never flown out the country or anything. So I'm like, what is the most touristy place I can get to that he won't feel uncomfortable? So we did Cancun and Tulum. We stayed at a resort that, um, you know, all inclusive. So we won't have to worry about food because as you can see, this is this is a big man. Bottomless <laughs> hole, man. And that was our first trip. And then that's when he was just like, oh, OK, I really do like to travel. And I've been taking him everywhere since. She broke me a good strategy. Like a bottle, Cancun is so, a good my first trip. That's a That was a good yes, strategy. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. So who typically who. So you plan this all out. Right. So I'll, I'll I'll give a little tidbit about us. Right. So when we travel, it's literally, a, hey, we find this, we buy it, we go. Right. But the attire. I, I, she's responsible for my attire because I want to make sure she looks good. I do the packing. Right? She does the <laughs> packing. We take care of everything because, look, I can't match her stylistic level. You know what I mean? I'll be honest with it. She's, she's, <laughs> she's the bomb.com. You know what Thank I mean? You, babe. But, um, so when it comes to packing, who's more of the like, um, <laughs> who's doing the planning? Who's doing the packing? Like, who's, who's the organized one? <laughs> mm. so she's giving you like a day-to-day itinerary this is what we're doing this is what we're doing or is it more like 
all right, well, we got the trip. We got the flights. Let's figure it out when we get there. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. No, you know, I'm an attorney, so very type A. I, I do the planning. I make itineraries. When well, I'll go shopping. And at this point, I just buy random stuff. Come up, okay, we're going to go somewhere where we need this. Since, since he was so football, he has nothing but UT, or, UT and Patriots gear. Like, he has no real outside clothes. So I just go to the store and just buy things. Like, oh, we'll, we'll go here and, you know, I'll buy tropical stuff, winter stuff. And then whenever I see a flight deal, I'll book it. So then now he has a full wardrobe. So, yes, I do the packing. Mm-hmm. I do the planning. Mm-hmm. I'll ask him what he wants to do or if there's anything he likes to see. Because before he used to not know anything. He would At just all. literally take his suitcase and we'd go to the destination. He wouldn't know. <laughs> Where we would be at until we got there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Must be nice. Man, look here. This is my unofficial stylist right here. Let me tell you something. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, high five to the unofficial stylist. There you go. Because you got to think, too. I'm like 6'2", about, and I'm slimmer. I'm way slimmer now. I'm about 240, 235. You got to think. If I'm 255, you got a size 14 shoe. Ain't too much that can fit in that suitcase. I'm going to be real with you. <laughs> and until she really showed me how to do stuff like that, I mean, I would have what I would plan on taking three or four pairs of shoes, all these outfits, and I would have no room at all. She got me a new suitcase, show me how to do this stuff. She still does everything, but I have a better idea just how to pack more efficiently as opposed mm. to putting stuff in there, you know, because mm-hmm. I mean, unless you know. You're just going to put it in there and just pray to God it closes, to be honest. Cancun, our first <laughs> trip, I let him bring whatever. This man brought almost his whole wardrobe. Let me tell you something. Like, I was the type of dude, like, if I was wearing it on Thursday, it was coming on the trip. You know what I mean? It's just like, well, why do you have that? I'm just like, I was going to wear it anyway. I'll wear it on the trip. It just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't add up. Yeah, he brought regular clothes, like <laughs> regular lounge up. stuff. Like, he has, like, a lot of shirts that he made cut off. He brought that like, sir, we on a trip. Don't yeah. nobody want to see this makeshift set up shirt. Yeah, here. it's like, you know, we're not going to uh to weightlifting right now. So it's like we had to revise the drip, if you feel me. So uh, look, there's that's always that's always great. Like, you know, another tidbit, you know, she hooked me up on the wardrobe. I hooked up on the travel perks, like you definitely did. Check, global entry, um, airport lounges. Like it's a, it's, I think it's a balancing act depending on what we experience in our previous lives before being together, mm-hmm. like just being able to be that, that merging, mer- merging couple is, is amazing because yeah. like, look, I told her the first time I was like, look, uh, we still in a pandemic. We still got time. Cause I think our first trip, our first international trip was Aruba. Right. So mm-hmm. I was like, look, mm-hmm. I don't want to leave you on this long ass line. <laughs> He's threatening to leave me y'all. I'm going on a pre-check. Chelsea Corey, so, he threatened to leave listen, me at TSA. Listen, he was like, if you don't upgrade and get just, TSA pre-check, global entry, I will leave you and you will be I've waiting on that left. line. <laughs> He's been left. I've been left multiple times. Let me tell you something. There's been so many times where she's like, man, I'm already at the gate. I was like, boy, they haven't even seen my ID yet. They don't even know. What- <laughs> not even fair. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm like, just saying, saying wouldn't be outside of security, so I'll it's usually a different get through experience. and I'll have issues. But oh, okay. it's a different now, experience. We are both clear. We're both TSA priests, and now we just zip through. No just issues. zip through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how do you so like can't clear? Wait, hold I mean, on, babe. I have a question. A, I just want to ask the clear question because okay. it's just it's not a it's not an advertisement for clear. But how do you guys like clear? Because I've considered it, but wasn't really sure if it was worth. Yeah, it. Yeah, is it worth it? So it depends because the reason why he didn't have TSA pre-check for the long, because I had got it first and I was trying to wait till mine kind of expired before we got global together. So we got global, which includes the TSA pre-check. And then we just got clear. I think clear is good if you're at a busy airport, because I wasn't going to get it at first because I didn't think that it made sense. But when we went to Atlanta, the TSA pre-check line was almost as long as general boarding. Here at MCO, I never saw the need for clear, but when we flew, the airport was busy. Mm-hmm. And so clear was good. So I think clear is good if you're going to go to like really busy airports like your your ATL or your Miami. LAX. Yeah, your Miami. Yeah. Because clear is not everywhere, but at least if you have TSA pre-check, you have clear, you have global, you'll be able to get through. But 
we just use we just use clear for Hawaii because like I said, we just got it. So I'm going to see the benefits because usually, you know, TSA pre-check, you're out. You're out fast. Now, clear gets you out faster mm-hmm. than TSA pre-check. But clear is not everywhere. When we went to Hawaii, they had TSA pre-check, but not clear. And that's it. Mm. I'll tell you what, you go through Atlanta, you better have clear. Yeah, but Atlanta, you need clear. <laughs> I'll tell you that. You okay. got TSA pre, you're going to be waiting. So oh, I think man. if you have a good credit card that comes with clear, because that's how we got it with the mm. um, American Express, their platinum gives clear. And so I just tagged on my mom's clear. <laughs> mm-hmm. But Because I think it's $90 a person. So you really do have to weigh it out. Weigh if is it's it worth, worth it? it? I have friends who die by clear. I'm not fully convinced yet. Yeah, and it's like okay. every year they charge you too. So you really got to be like, am I going to um, use this? Or is it, yeah. you know, because if you go to, I mean, if you go to 10 destinations and one of them uses clear and you pay for it, it's not really good, you know. Right. Use it all the time. It's worth it. So. Okay. So Cancun was your first trip. Hawaii was your most recent. What was your favorite trip? Mm, ours might actually differ. I think our favorite was I think our favorite was Paris. Oh, by mm. far. Oh, it was by the same far. for both of you. By far. Yeah, I think Paris was fun. Paris and was, what made I mean, Paris that, your that favorite? Whole... Oh, what'd you sorry, say? What'd you say? what made Paris your favorite? I think when we went to Paris, I didn't even necessarily book it on our wedding day. It was just the flight just work. So we got on there. We got married 10, 10, 20. We went to Paris 10, 10, 19. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I found that I passed the bar a week before we left. Oh, Oh, that was a turn up. Right. Celebrating our engagement because he proposed to me a day before I started studying for the bar exam. So we couldn't celebrate. (laughs) I, 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 I was literally, yay. Thank you. Next day. Bar right. for like two months straight. That was rough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Paris was really good for us to actually celebrate all that. We went to a Michelin star restaurant. We, mm-hmm. And it was like, it was Paris in the Netherlands, but Paris was good. We went to Paris Disney. So that was his first Disney international trip. That was crazy. Right. But it was just, I mean, was, it was just the vibe. Walking through and seeing the Eiffel in real life and actually seeing it light up and, you know, sparkle, I think that was just breathtaking. And it really mm-hmm. set itself apart from all the other trips because mm-hmm. when you go somewhere and it's a spectacle and then it's historic on top of that, in yeah. addition to all the good food, I mean, all around, it was just a great trip. You got to have money for it. I will tell you that if you're going to a Michelin <laughs> star restaurant, because when I saw yeah. that check, I was like, good Lord, I'm glad I played football because boy. <laughs> oh, boy. But no, it was, uh, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. Nice, nice. So, right. so. So, so um, as far as trips, right, do you guys have uh, top five trips to go to um, so far? Or are you guys just going as, like you said earlier, deals come up? A combination yeah. of both. I've been trying to get us to go to Thailand for the longest because we were trying to go there for our honeymoon, but because of COVID, it was mm-hmm. closed. Mm-hmm. And then we tried going this year. It was still closed. So Thailand is on our top. Japan's on our top. I've been, but he hasn't. Mm-hmm. And he wants to go to Japan Universal. He wants to go to the Disney um, where else is it that I didn't even know there was a Japan Universal up, something <laughs> else there there's something else that opening up there I think it's a Universal I forgot no what no, no another place that you wanted to go to mm-hmm. I'm trying to think I know I want to go to Africa um, mm. Uh, mm. it'll come to me eventually but I know I want to go to Africa just while something. you guys are thinking about it you said your wedding was 10 10 20 that's in the middle of COVID so did your oh, yeah. wedding your actual wedding plans change or vary from how you originally envisioned to how you actually executed it? You know, not really, because I wanted a small, intimate wedding. Like I didn't want a lot of people. And Mm -hmm. because I picked 10, 10, 20, I didn't know how popular that date was. So I'm planning the wedding while I'm studying for the bar. Mm -hmm. And then when COVID hit, the venue shut down weddings before October. But mm. our date was still set in stone, and we had we had a hundred people. Um, that's a small. That's small? 
cool. I wanted 50 originally, but my side alone was she has 50. so much family. They like nobody in my family would exactly. come. She's like 50. I want a people. small. Like, who is like her family is so large. I'm like, how am my family gonna get in? We got like two <laughs> two slots. Like, there's no way. Speak, brother. Speak. Come on. You speak it like that. <laughs> like me. I'm, I'm trying to listen to Then this. the bros had to come, so there was no way. But I limit the bros. I limited the bros because I didn't want to have a bro wedding. And I'm like, I, I limited that. It was still a bro. But it, it worked out really good. Everyone did temperature checks. The people who was sick didn't come. Um, mm-hmm. No one got COVID at the wedding. We had custom masks for everybody. Mm-hmm. And then the happy hour was outside. And then the inside, I did the tables for everyone to sit with their family or their friends. So it wasn't like mm-hmm. mixed tables. And it, like I said, it worked, worked out great. No one had COVID because, you know, we're in Florida. So Florida yeah. has looser yeah, hey, rules. Like, <laughs> none. Loose no <laughs> rules, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Aren't y'all the ones that have hurricane parties? Right. It's a very interesting state. We'll just call it that. And uh, safety's not the top of their priority. Hurricanes <laughs> aren't that bad. Hurricanes aren't. Hurricanes bad. not that bad, but it takes out whole countries. Man, look here. Well, if we're you're in on the Florida, coast, Florida. You're okay, yeah, if you're on the coast, you're screwed. We're, we're in central lie. Florida, so there's no water to go. So once there's a hurricane. It'll be damaged, but it won't be as bad. When we was in Tennessee, there was a tornado. I'm more terrified of tornadoes yeah. than I am of hurricanes. My mm-hmm. hurricane is not ripping a hundred year old trees out of his roots and putting it on his side. I'll tell you that right now. So I seen multiple hurricanes in the year, what it did, and I've seen one tornado. I'm more scared of that tornado. Let me tell you something. And the tornado is mm-hmm. unpredictable. Hurricanes, you pretty much know where they're coming from. But the it's path just is. The actual reinforcements and infrastructure to stand up. Yeah, you have time to leave. When you see yeah. the bad damage of the hurricanes, those are like in the Bahamas, mm-hmm. stuff where the infrastructure isn't that good. Because even in the coast of Florida, like Key West will get hit kind of bad. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, the buildings, everything is made to withstand hurricane winds. But nothing's mm-hmm. going to withstand a tornado. If it wants to right. blow, it's, it's going to tear the house up mm-hmm. for sure. <laughs> Wait, Chelsea, you said you didn't want a bra wedding, so you were limiting the bras? Meanwhile, I'm over here like, can you get more of your bras to come to the wedding? <laughs> Why'd you want to limit them? Because there, when there's too much, it just, <laughs> the bras are unpredictable. They're unpredictable. This is true. And so we had an open bar, which I didn't want, but everyone was like, no, open bar. So the open bar with a lot of bras, that's a bad combination. Open bar with a select handful of bras, that's a party. That's, that's a manageable. Okay, that's a party. <laughs> you got to realize, right. you got to realize bras will make their way to Paris, right? So like, like, so we're, we're getting married in Morocco. And so we literally gave people a year's notice. We got a travel planner. We got everything. Just create a payment plan and everything. We still have people that are like, so when is this happening? What's going on? <laughs> and I'm like, cut, cut, cut. So like we, we had at some point had to give people like a six month cut off. So in October, we was like, yo, we got to cut everybody. It wasn't at the, it was at November, right? It was in, October. It, it was, was October. Six so in October, before, yeah. mm-hmm. we gave people a six months cut off. If you didn't reserve a room, if you didn't like get a flight or if you didn't do anything within our planning, like I love you, but you're going to catch the highlights. He was you know snip, I mean? snip, snip it. It don't and matter was, who it is, how close he was like, you don't have to snip. And I'm like, but they just need a little bit more time. They need, need a little bit I'm more snipping. time. So then She's he took adding. me off the host. I'm the <laughs> so I'm not so even a host we, at my own wedding, y'all. Like I'm a guest. At my own wedding, because he was so won't we use we use an app called Hobnob to to, to RSVP communicate because what I didn't want is create more headache for her in reaching out to people. So everybody we invited, we told them, look, this is going to be the premier way of communicating. If you're not part of the communication, when it's time to get cut off, you're going to get cut off. So people were hitting her up. Hey, hey, I forgot to add the app. And my people is the same look, thing. Look, like, oh, Paige bro. and Chelsea on the same page. Like, snip, snip, listen, snip. Listen, oh, it was I like, cut. oh, man, <laughs> I, I, I didn't get the messages. My girlfriend got the messages. I forgot. I was like, look. So 
We we <laughs> added a few people back, <laughs> right? But I, so she was a host. She was my co-host. So she was responsible for communicating, adding people. Why did I have to take my own fiance as a co-host off? Just of took me off. Just because get, I have no privileges now. I listen, can't invite at one people. point. We were at like almost 65 people, 70. The budget was 50. Right. Mm. And so I was like, look, we're going to have to snip somewhere. If they not responding <laughs> in the next 10 days. Go. Facts. Even if that's they what I'm know. trying to tell him, even if they book, there's so we have 52, 53, you know, like 55. That still will get us to the 50 range. He's like, nope, I want it at 48. So that we make sure it's not. And we had people begging to come, like, oh, make sure you invite me. And they never and showed And they didn't up. show. I think we sent out 150 invitations, 150, 175, something like that. Because we knew 100 people wasn't going to show up. But I needed 100 people because I got this big old cake. And it had to be <laughs> that many people. And so you'd be surprised that people will... RSVP, they will say that they're gonna come, but then they will not show. I had people on the seating chart that did not come. Wow. Was so it a destination I'd or was it them an invoice? Ooh, it was just in it Florida. was in Florida. It was, it was destination in, for in Orlando. Some, not most. It was in Orlando. Oh. I wanted a destination wedding, which I'm glad I didn't because of COVID, it would have been shut down. Yeah. yeah. Because our date was so popular, I had to find something immediately in the venue that we had. We had a brunch style wedding because that's the only time that they had left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So ours was very unconventional because everything was booked and then COVID happened. Then everything was getting canceled Mm because at the end of the day, we were still going to get married 10, 10, 20. I didn't care if it was going to be us, our parents, that big old wedding cake. (laughs) It was still still happening. It was going down. It was going to be there because we we had some mishand like I had a few bridesmaids who didn't show up because of COVID and I was just like you know it's it is what it is I actually haven't even spoken to them since then mm. just because you didn't you know it wasn't good communication like yes I understand that it's COVID if you mm. don't want to go that's fine just message me sign like I'm begging my bridesmaids like hey are you guys coming are mm. you coming to the bachelorette party so it's just like when it's a wedding, you literally just have to focus on you two and the people who love y'all will show up. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, you can, they will do everything and last minute they will not come. As long as the Lord is there, we're good. It's, oh, that's God, all that it's God's guest list. It's God's guest list. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so when it comes to travel, I ask all my guests this, like, what is traveling while black like? Right. You mm-hmm. guys travel domestically, internationally. What does mm-hmm. traveling while black look like for y'all? Like, and then um, let's break it up into two folds, right? As individuals, because my man use use a husky dude, you know. Right, they, right, 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 right. All the white women are walking across the, on the other side of the street when you come through. But in 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 Paris, they may be like, oh, mon ami, you beautiful they, hair. Right. Beautiful I was gonna skin. say it could go either way, depending on what country you right. go to. So what mm-hmm. what has travel been like for you both? In individually as travelers, as black travelers, mm-hmm. and then what has has it changed now that you you guys travel together? Oh, well, you can go first. Please. I'm gonna be honest with you. I really didn't travel anywhere internationally until we got together. Um, I was really pretty much just domestic. And you gotta think, me playing football everywhere I went it was kind of athletic related. Yeah. So I mean, you get treated like a black athlete, which is. I mean, pretty much like a white man, to be honest with you. <laughs> so it's like people are really nice, don't really have many issues. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, when you stop playing and then you're just traveling as a black person, it's very different. Mm. Um, people see you as a threat. They assume things. And I think it was very interesting. We're going to talk about international. So when we were going from Paris to the Netherlands, we had a train that we had to catch. Mm-hmm. Now, we were getting on this train. We had our tickets. Um I don't think there were many black people on the actual train. So we kind of stuck out. But obviously, I'm pretty large. Um, she's black. We both have blocks. So we, we're sticking out. So we're sitting on the actual train. We're getting our stuff. We're snug. We're ready to go. This white dude comes up and he's just like, obviously, in a foreign accent. I have no clue where he was from. He was just like, yeah, I think this is my seat. And we're looking at him like, it's not your seat, but I'll play your game. OK. So he went and got someone, came back and was like, no, nah, they're, they're sitting in my seat. And I'm just like. All right, bro, you want to do this? I have no problem. You look stupid. Okay. So the guy gets his ticket. He looks and he's just like, 
nah, this, this ain't your seat. He's like, matter of fact, I don't know where your seat is. So he's like, actually, <laughs> you come with me. And he's just walking with him. And I'm just like, interesting. <laughs> I was like, you trying to get me out of my seat the whole time. We don't even know where your seat is, bro. I'm like, God bless you, though. I'm like, I could have chose to get upset, get mean and nasty. So, you know, what? I'm doing the Christian way. I'm just chill out because, you know, the mm. old boy before, you know, I've been better would have been turned in there. Like, what do you mean you can't sit in my seat? This, this, you know, but I wasn't going to do all that because at the end of the day, we have our stuff together. She's a very good planner. She checks up two, three, four times before we even get there. So there was mm-hmm. no way bro, that was your seat. So it's just interesting the dynamics of when you're traveling and you're presented a certain way as like an athlete or whatever, you get treated a certain way when you're a normal person, significantly different, different. And that's both domestic and international from my right. perspective. I think for me personally, I've been everywhere. When I went into South Korea, which I always tell anyone who's black, like go to South Korea. Cause I didn't think that I would go. Like I learned Korean, which you don't have to, but it made the experience more fun. They treat you great. You see a lot of other Black people there because the U.S. military is really heavy in South Korea Mm -hmm. and the food is good. They don't they don't look at you like you're a foreigner. And if you if you ever listen to K-pop, just just listen to it once. It sounds like R&B. It sounds like pop. They have Mm -hmm. hip hop. They have rappers. Actually, one Korean artist, his name is Jay Park. He signed with Rock Nation. He's like the first Korean artists to sign with them and when you go there they just treat you with so much respect i had braids when i went and these older korean korean women they were like so fascinated but they asked me like hey can we see your braids we just want to see how it's done and like you know how some people be like wanting to touch your hair and like oh we, we ain't going for that they were so <laughs> respectful and they're just like this is so pretty and they were like asking me like how you could braid it when i went to japan completely different Mm -hmm. i dealt with so much racism even when i got to the airport me and my other friend we were the only black people in our group because i did it as a study abroad we were the only ones who got our bags completely searched when we were there they would take pictures of us they would point like they looked at us like in the zoo even when i went to disney there was three black people in that entire park (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we should have all just stuck together. <laughs> but they're just they're just rude there. It's it's really light and day because I know a lot of people like, oh, I want to go to Japan. You know, Japan's fun. Japan's OK. It's expensive. They don't speak English. Even in the airport, they'll look at you crazy. South Korea, your money stretches longer. You're going to have fun. That chicken. You're going to see more people <laughs> that look like you. Even even the Koreans, they're they're kind of like dark. So it doesn't look like you're a fish out of water, mm-hmm. unlike in other Asian places. But most of the time I have good interactions. But I will say like Japan is where I fully saw racism. Like this little girl kicked her foot, feet up at me and gave me the death stare like she was trying to fight me like like i said bad vibes and you didn't see as many black people either because everywhere we go we'll see we'll i've seen like a lot of more black travelers you'll see black couples Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. i know men get treated way better black men get way treated better especially if they're tall because it's like more of an athlete but i think over there it's a lot of stereotypes and of fetishes. Yeah, stereotypes and fetishes. Mm. I did go to one part where they thought I was a model and like this one guy wanted me to take a picture with his daughter. So it was really night or day. They either thought I was a model or they thought I was like John Wick. I kid you not. When I was in Disney, I was John Wick when he got kicked out of the Continental. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's how much I was getting stared at everywhere I went. I was like, y'all know something that I don't know? Mm-hmm. Traveling together is different because since he's so big, they automatically assume that he's an athlete. So they'll come up to him, want to take pictures. Um, they'll they'll ask some questions. They'll just they'll push me to the side. Like I don't even exist. Yeah, that crap. When we went to the Michelin star restaurant, like mind you, I'm I am just a black man in Paris. I have no athletic gear on. Soon as we get in, there, it's like you play in the NFL, huh? And I'm just like. Do I have it written on my forehead? Like, God, leave, bro. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's I weird. Tower, one of the restaurants we went to, they're like, oh, can you take a picture with us? Because, like I said, he's he famous when we go international because <laughs> he's just this 
big black man. So you automatically assume which you can be a big black man and not play sports. It's so bittersweet because it's like I'm a like I do so many other things. Like I'm an engineer, I make music, personal trainer. But I did play like I was in the NFL. So it's like, I don't want to lie and be like, nah, nah, you're you're wrong. Like I just these muscles are for show. You know what I mean? But it's like, listen, these are for show. Yeah, you know, you got it. these are for show. It's weird. Yeah, no, together we don't have any racism experiences. Yeah, it's we, just because they know what time because I'm not going for none of that. Yeah, it's more so <laughs> starstruck, like, oh, he's big, mm. he must be an athlete. Let me take a picture. It's more of that. And before it used to be cute. But it's not cute anymore. Like I just want to <laughs> enjoy being visible if, if, being if we can. Out. <laughs> yeah, you know that's crazy. The worst I've been mistaken for was Snoop Dogg, but I was also about like forty pounds lighter, right? <laughs> so I'm a six two, about one sixty, and I had locks. I had like super long locks. He so, does have locks, you now, know. Yeah. So it was one of those where they called me Snoop Dogg. I, this was this was actually in Cancun. So they call me Snoop Dogg. There you um, go. They made a drink call me called the Scooby Doo, and I was like, "Oh, okay." But I mean, it's Mexico. They make fun of everybody. You know mm. what I mean? Um, and so I didn't really take it take it um, serious because I more so was laughing with them. Because um, <laughs> so going it, so we went to the Hard Rock, and going to the Hard Rock, um, they was like announcing my name. And um, my name is Paige, but if you don't know how to pronounce it, it was Pehuge. We're looking for Pehuge Benjamin. <laughs> so I kind of took Snoop Dogg and let it rock. So after hey, the uh, ceremony, <laughs> so Pehuge Snoop wedding, Dogg. Take Snoop Dogg. You know, Dogg. so Pehuge Snoop Dogg. I'll take Snoop Dogg. You know what I mean? Because they tra- treat me like I was a superstar. So I was like, let's rock. Right. Um, so but yeah, so like the, the stark differences between you guys as individuals and you guys coming together is is good. Bec- like now, do you guys feel like domestically you're treated the same you were treated international as a couple mm-hmm. or domestically you're just another black or brown person? Domestically, I think it varies on where we go, because if we go to a football state, it's going to be the same starstruck. If we go to like a regular place in Maine, we didn't have any issues. Zero. Yeah. So if we go to like a place like Maine or somewhere where they're not heavily on sports, we're just a regular black couple. Mm -hmm. Let us go to a place where they're really big on football. They spot him. They're going to ask him. But sometimes he wears his Tennessee shirts, too. So I'm asking for it. He asks for it. (laughs) (laughs) So so that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's my school. I went there. I got a degree from there. I can't rock the colors. You know, it's just like so it's like at those times, I don't mind it because obviously I'm wearing a shirt that makes sense. But it's 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 the plain clothes for me, the plain fit, the black clothes. And just we're going to dinner like, hey, aren't you? And I'm just like. Jesus Christ, bro. You know, domestically, we it's, it's either regular black couple or back to the starstruck. Because when we went to Denver, we had a really good time. Yeah, there too. Denver was nice. Like, it was nice. When we went to Utah, our car got broken down. And we was apparently in this really racist area. This interracial couple had came up to us. She, she was white. <laughs> and she's like, are you guys OK? We've been circling around, just making sure. She's like, because you guys got stopped in a really racist area. And we want to make sure that nothing happened. And do you guys need anything? So that was a different approach. Mm-hmm. Like nothing happened to us. We were stuck in the car for two hours. <laughs> two things about that. Number one, Ford. You know, was it a Mustang? It was a Mustang. Mustang suck. Never buy Mustangs. Trash car. Number one. <laughs> number two. The funny part about that situation was we were on the side of baking in the heat. When she got out, we were like, nah, nah, we're good. Whole time we did not know her husband was black. So when she walked back to the car, it stayed there. And I was like, why is the truck still here? Then the black dude gets out. He walks out. He's like, okay, hey guys, I don't know if he thought like it was a setup. We thought it was a setup. Because <laughs> he was just like, let me come out here. Okay, guys. Hey, look, it's me. Okay, it's your boy. Are y'all okay? Blink twice if you get, you know what I mean? He was one of those. And it was crazy because if you looked around at the spot we were at, you wouldn't have thought, like, oh, yeah, this no, is super racist. It, did, it didn't look like we didn't see no Trump flags. We didn't see no Confederate flags. Mm-hmm. Like, I know Utah is different, right. but we didn't know that we were in a 
pretty racist area. Because in the South, mm-hmm. you just spot it. Like, oh, wait, is that a Trump? Twi- okay, boom. Is that a Confederate? Okay, I know where I'm at. You know what I mean? But there, you, I mean, you li- you would have been blindly walking into it. There's no way you would have known. You know what I mean? So I think that's part of the reason why you got to be alert and just know where you're going and know where you're at because we would have had no clue, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. So speaking of Utah, you guys are like the third or fourth couple to mention Utah. Like, what was that experience like outside of the breakdown? Where we were trying to go to, I, I either see some rocks. I don't know. I found something online. Mm-hmm. When we got broken down, we were stuck for so long that the only thing we did in Utah was went to a Hawaiian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't really get to see much of Utah. It's it's beautiful. We're supposed to be going. Oh, was to that the crystal city. stands? Is that the the crystal sands? Was that the allure? Oh, the salt. The salt. Uh, the salt. Was it the salt fields or something like salt that? Salt fields. Yeah. Is it that? Was it that? No. Because we we went to Las Vegas because that was our first honeymoon. Mm-hmm. So from Vegas to Utah, we didn't go to Salt Lake City. Like I said. I, maybe we was looking at canyons because the part we were going, mm-hmm. it was a lot of rocks. Like it's beautiful there. So I think we were going to like a canyon park or something like that where they had colorful red rocks. I think that's what we were going mm-hmm. to. Okay. But we had reservations for a restaurant in Las Vegas. So by the time the car got broken down, they had to take us to the Utah airport. And by the time we got all that, we literally just had enough time to go to the restaurant because our flight was leaving that night. Let me mm-hmm. tell you something. But it he's been was, to Utah. That's the thing. So Utah, when we drove through there, we drove through a mountain. That was beautiful, number one. So the mm-hmm. actual landscape of Utah is breathtaking. I recommend anyone who wants to see some breathtaking stuff, go to Utah. I was in Utah two several times. I went with her. We were in the car. That was beautiful. I think it was around a summer or just a no, time we were, where... We October. It was like a October. honeymoon. Either way, it wasn't snowy outside. I've been to Salt Lake City when it's snowing outside. It is beautiful. You have to go. It's breathtaking. I recommend it to everybody because just flying in, not even just stepping out your car, flying in. Mm. I would do Salt Lake City because wherever part of Utah we were at, I think it was by Las Vegas, which Mm. is not that many brown. Well, there's Hawaiians there, but not black folks. But Salt Mm -hmm. Lake City, I think, would be a better area because that's where we're going to go next year. Okay. In Salt Lake City. Not a lot of blacks in Salt Lake City. I will say that. Not not a lot of blacks. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. But the, I mean, the city's beautiful. It like it's, it's beautiful. We gotta go. You know, like okay, I would recommend. It. Like Paige said, okay. that's our third recommendation. Yeah, so maybe yeah. it's not a lot of black people there, but black people are traveling there. Well, well, hey, you can pop in there now. There's the Black Sea <laughs> Week in Utah. Right, right. That's yeah. useful information. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. So we we all just endured a 18 month plus pandemic lockdowns. Mm. Well, you guys didn't experience a lockdown. We experienced a lockdown. <laughs> right. Um, but life has changed a lot since then. Right. We've all learned a little bit about ourselves. We've all had to adapt to what's considered a new normal. Right. Um, tell us what is your new normal today as it relates to travel as travelers and what did it look like before? So for example, you know, you can book a flight ready to go and not have to worry about COVID tests, vaccinations, or do they have restrictions? Like what was your normal before and what does it look like now? Hmm. I'm a real big germaphobe. So my normal before, my normal after didn't change. <laughs> like I always- Brought and then I was actually mad because of the pandemic because I always would buy like the little mini Lysol <laughs> and I'd buy the Lysol wipes. When the pandemic happened, now all of a sudden people want to be clean and taking my travel supplies. And I, gone. I gotta go on <laughs> Amazon and I gotta look through here to get all my minis. So that part kind of changed with me as far as like frustration because now I have like five or six little mini things of life. So like I'm a hoarder because they always <laughs> sell out. The um, finding the COVID test, that is a little bit more tricky because you didn't have to deal with that beforehand. When we yeah. went to Costa Rica, mm-hmm. trying to find to get a COVID test in places where they don't speak English, 
he knows Spanish way better than I do, but neither one of us can read it. So I'm trying to <laughs> translate and make sure this, and I'm going on the state department's website to make sure this place is an acceptable for a COVID test. And now with the new rule that you have to have one 24 hours before your flight is going to be a little damper because we're going to Mexico city in about like 20 days for my birthday. So now I got to make sure I find a place, either a neighboring hotel that's going to do a rapid test or somewhere near. So we have one when we fly out the next day. So the, the COVID testing part, that's what's kind of getting a little hurdle. It sucks. It sucks. And then <laughs> it's an added expense in, in Costa Rica. I think we spent almost $200 on COVID tests. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, it was. I mean, and yeah, you, had to, like you had to find it too. Like it wasn't just like, oh, hey, we're giving out COVID tests. Like you had to really find it. It was. So yeah, so trying to find a COVID location in a foreign country. So then you got to turn on your data to get the what to, to make sure you go <laughs> into the right place. Mm-hmm. So that part is, and we've already been vaccinated. We got the booster like a few weeks ago. So. Mm-hmm. That part doesn't bother me. And then with the Clear app, I will say that you can put your vaccination um, stuff on there. Because in Florida, we don't have digital vaccine cards that we can just... I know New York has like the, the digital and other places. Yeah, really? mm-hmm. uh, yeah, really? yeah. Hawaii has it. Mm-hmm. Places that care. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Florida doesn't. Florida so cares. She's talking about vaccine cards. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, so that, that's that's the only thing that and having to make sure that you're still able to go to the location because for our honeymoon, we was, like I said, we was going to try to do Thailand. That didn't work. So then we booked for Cabo's and we were going to do Hawaii, actually, but Hawaii was close. So I think especially last year, trying to find somewhere for our real honeymoon was it was a hurdle because I'm trying to make sure we can get in. But I also yeah. got to make sure we can get out because mm-hmm. <laughs> they're changing the borders nonstop. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to make sure we got into a place where we wouldn't get kicked out or if it wasn't too far. Even Costa Rica, I made him bring his work computer. I was just about to touch on that. Just to make sure like if we if they change the rules and we got to be stuck here for another two weeks or what if I, we get a negative COVID, a positive COVID test and we have mm-hmm. to be here 14 days. Since he can work remote, I'm like, okay, when we go international, he has to bring his computer now. Benefits of mm-hmm. working remote. Just yeah. that's, that's a plus. Mm-hmm. I take my work computer everywhere just in case. Mm-hmm. And quite honestly, they understand, like, all right, if it gets lost due to travel or whatever, it's not your fault. They have a way of wiping that thing down and not, you know, getting access to uh, not letting anybody access it. But yeah, like for me, um, we definitely do the whole work from work remote. We both maybe take like two or three days where we like handle things remotely and then enjoy the rest of the trip. But Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely part of the new norm for a lot of people, right? Is since working remote has been a new thing, it's given a lot of people the opportunity to travel. Right. And for us, I know, you know, it's, it's, it gets difficult sometimes because there are things that you probably want to do during the day that we end up doing like maybe later in the day because we're trying to make sure that we clock in and clock out and then enjoy ourselves. Yep. So the work remote is is definitely a cheat code for traveling nowadays. Mm-hmm. So as far as traveling goes, what are some, so like, what are your top five tips, right? For travel. Um, now that we talked about how you used to do it. <laughs> Corey, why you just looked that? at her? You don't have a tip. Oh. You can- <laughs> no, she got it. She got 20. You don't stand so, up in a canoe. <laughs> she got <laughs> don't stand, don't stand up. up. There you go. It's got you. <laughs> so let's let's hear the story about the canoe. Who fell in, who fell out the canoe? <laughs> no one fell off a canoe. I just always say that when somebody's like, I want a tip. It's just like a little my But dad he used always, to be afraid of canoes. I used to be kayaking. afraid of everything. <laughs> afraid of everything. So um, I think good travel tips is invest in a really good travel suitcase. We use a way. Mm. And so, <laughs> so <do we. laughs> yeah, uh, the bigger carry on is perfect because people's like, oh, how do you guys pack? Like if I can put two to three pair size 14 shoes in that suitcase, 
you can fit anything. And so mm-hmm. I don't like checking bags. You have to wait for them. We it just we just had an issue coming back from Hawaii with checking a bag. We just yeah, my parents' bag is gone. We think someone accidentally took it. Oh my god! Wow, <laughs> feel salty about that. Yeah. So really invest in a good travel suitcase that you can fit all your stuff in there without having to check a bag. And to what I like to do is I bring a book bag in one of our bags. So then that way, when I buy stuff, we can just check it. Because before I used to buy bags where we're at, but then you end up having a a ton of bags that you're not going to (laughs) use. So invest in a good travel suitcase, bring a bag for um, supplies, really research where you're going, even if it's Mm -hmm. a quick like top 25 things to do, because he used to not do that. And then we'd get to the place and he wouldn't know anything what there is to do. Mm. What's to do? Like, what do they Not have? Not where to eat. Just, just like food options. Like, you wouldn't even know. Or like, what, what the food that they eat there. Yeah. Like. Mm. You know? And don't be afraid to do stuff that's out of your comfort zone. Like, yeah. You can, yeah, you can um, ATV in your place, but go ATVing somewhere else or go zip lining off a mountain. Go do, we did a waterfall activity that I thought that I would enjoy. Hated it. Didn't like it at all. I loved it. But he loved it. It was amazing. So did you have to climb up the mountain? Oh, man. Climbed up, jumped off, jumped slid off, off. Slid off rocks. And if you name it, we was we was doing it for, yeah, for the it, most part. I thought I would like it because I'm not afraid of heights, but he is. So, well, not anymore, really, because I've gotten him out of it. I I always try to do one type of adventurous activity, whether it be mm-hmm. zip lining, you know, jumping up. I always try to plan one because you're on a trip and you're not going to do this stuff at home. So I always put one. I put one adventurous activity, one food activity. Mm-hmm. And then like a chill, I guess, like an IG thing, whether it's the beach or waterfall, whatever that place has that you know that you can take pictures and you can relax. I try to do that because I think a lot of people try to pack in so much stuff on a trip, but you got to make sure that you have time to enjoy it, but also activities. And if you're not a foodie, just become one just for the trip. (laughs) Just for the trip. (laughs) Just for the trip. (laughs) I know myself. I was really like I wasn't. I didn't really want to try a lot of new food just because I like consistency on what I eat. I also not trying to gain weight nothing like that. But I will tell you, when you open your mind up to new things, you'll find food and you can incorporate into your normal diet just because Mm. you weren't even aware that that was an option. Like she started having chicken poke at one point, and I was just like, (laughs) poke what? You know what I mean? Like what are we poking? Like what what is poked on my plate? Now, literally, I will buck her. I'm like, yo, when, when you when are you cooking that poke? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> when am I going to see that poke? Because when you close your mind to certain things, I think it takes the enjoyment out of life and out of traveling. Mm. Just having an open mind and just really being OK with things changing. I think that's a big, big tip I would tell people. Don't and, be used to the status quo. Yeah, and there's so many mm. varieties of fruit. Like, OK, you might not like a banana in America. OK, but if you go to Brazil, it's a different banana, that's a different banana, that's a different banana. I'm it, telling you. So just try like I always tr- I try the national fruits. I try everything that I can because it's not going to be the same as it is home. Like Japanese peaches. I love they are so amazing. <laughs> Georgia peaches. They are right to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like peaches at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. See, Corey, you actually had a tip. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, just, but see, I can only give you a tip if I personally experienced it. You know, like, okay, here's a tip: you doing water activity, bring water shoes. Don't don't go out there barefoot. Two we, tips. Just, we just went to Hawaii. We was on a <laughs> beach. We were not aware. Obviously, it's a volcanic beach. We we're not aware that rocks are just waiting to scuff your feet. She got a whole cut in the foot now because we didn't have no water shoes. So bring water shoes, you're doing water yeah. activity. Don't be like And this. that was my fault too, because I saw them like, and eh, we don't need no water shoes. Hey man, at that <laughs> moment, we knew we screwed up. I'm going to tell you that right now. We were getting hit. Like, I was like, all oh, these rocks. I was like, man, I wish I had some shoes. <laughs> all right, so we're going to come off the shoes. So so you guys mentioned um you actually Chelsea, you mentioned that you're working on being a content creator. 
this is an opportunity to tell the world what you guys got going on yeah. um, and where they can find you guys. Okay. So you can find me at Chelsea Kiera Travels. And I, I have a cooking page, but I'm not fully active on that because it's hard to do it. But on my main page, you'll see where I have the cooking on there. So you can easily go there. I do have recipes because I, I cook primarily Korean and African-American soul food together. Oh, oh. so it, we might have it, to go to Orlando. I can mail you a plate. I mean, I mean like if, if I could just listen, put a plate in the listen, mail. I'm already, I'm already like, when are we booking a trip to Atlanta? Orlando? Yeah. <laughs> Florida is on. We got to go back to Florida. You know, we just came back. We might have to go back. Yeah, yeah, I, I I do like hosting parties and all types of stuff. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm really trying to showcase black people, especially black professionals that they can travel. I started traveling my last year of law school. I went a new place every month. Kind of like, look, if law is going to make me tired and age me, I'm going to travel. I'm going to use the government's money and go somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) I always tell, that's another thing I like to do. I like to tell law students or just professionals, use your PTO. Your job don't care for you because that's why I left my firm because they didn't want to give me PTO, even though it was unlimited. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to work for you guys nonstop and not enjoy. And that was on our our anniversary, our one-year anniversary. They didn't give it to me. So, Really, my platform is to try to tell people, look, go travel. And if your job's not going to allow you, find another job because there is plenty of jobs of which you can't get back as time. You can spend mm-hmm. so much of your energy on a job and you get sick. They replace you immediately. Yeah. You die. Yep. Your job's probably already on LinkedIn. <laughs> on LinkedIn, Why right. Why right. you under? Bro, let me, mm-hmm. to piggyback off that, I remember I was playing football in Tennessee. One of our players literally, like, screwed his whole knee up. Coach came over, moved the ball up. I'm like, this is yep. crazy. Oh, yep. so like, yeah. that's, that's how life is, you know? So that's right. what my page is about, is really trying to tell people, use your PTO, go out. Like, even if it's, doing a staycation. I just like to try to post, you know, my travels and let people know like, look, I'm an attorney, but Hey, that's not my whole personality. That's not my whole identity. Mm-hmm. So that's what I try to showcase is that you can travel. You can travel while black. You can, you can be a solo. Cause that's what I used to be. I used to be a solo traveler. Now I do, you know, I travel with him, but you can still travel. And that's my main thing is to tell young people, especially young black women that look, you can travel. Yes. Yes. You can get the career and all that. But what's the point of having money if you can't go anywhere? Right. That part. And so I, I try to focus. I try to showcase that a lot with my brand that you can be successful. You can travel. You can travel. You can be married. You know, you can travel with a career. And that's what I like to showcase is you're, you're black. You can travel and it's going to be fun. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Talk about your brand. You can catch me on Instagram at V O L underscore Vereen. That's Vol Vereen. Vol mm-hmm. is a volunteer. He used to be a Tennessee volunteer. Vereen, that's my last name. On that page, you can expect me covering NFL games, college games, uh, just your usual memes about football. In addition to that, you can also catch me doing some cool workouts. Now, mm-hmm. for the butter, what you need to do is go follow at meanvereentraining.com. We have some excellent information on there about weight loss, fat loss, in the tighter butt area, which a lot of women want to do. In addition to that, just looking and feeling better and a bunch of wellness information that I think will be a key part of you having a consistent and healthy lifestyle. That's mm-hmm. at Mean Vereen Training. And we I also have a website, MeanVereenTraining.com. You can check that out as well. You got that pitch down. Pat. You must. Oh, look. yeah, man. Listen, oh, listen, that. That's, that's that elevator about. joint. Let me tell you that. something. You if quit. I played in the NFL and I didn't know how to talk in front of a camera, that would be ridiculous. You know, mm-hmm. so you come on, man. Well, I appreciate it. Any last words for our viewers and listeners? Uh, book the trip. Don't book be afraid. Trip. Book the trip. Mm-hmm. You will have zero regrets. Even if stuff goes bad on the trip. Just enjoy it. Worry about that when you get home. Only positive vibes on vacation. Mm-hmm. Mm. I only got three Thank things to say. Thing. Pray, aim high, and stay focused. To everybody out there. That's okay. awesome. Awesome. Well, 
We definitely thank you both for jumping on and being mm-hmm. so open about your experience in travel and you know, kind of making each other better. And the orange Korean chicken, was it Korean chicken or orange Korean chicken? I'm just trying to make just sure I get look it right. look like Korean fried chicken. Korean, Korean fried, fried chicken. I, I don't even need to look it up. I'm going to go on Chelsea's page Bro. to see if I can <laughs> find it on her If you ever come Korean down here, fried chicken. you need it. Well, yeah, don't we'll threaten us with a good time. Oh, we are, we already, we're going to book that in. That's got to happen. Then one time right, she had a nerve to serve waffles with it, man. Like, it, it, it was... Like, bro, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, that's what I'm saying. You see what she be doing, dude? Like, you see why uh, I have to work out? It's, see, it's, it's a whole tandem. We eat good and we work out good, man. It's, you work I understand. Out good. I understand. Yeah. Well, everybody, thank you very much for joining. And we'll talk to you later. Peace. Thank you.